Willie D. Live. Oh, oh, you thought oh, I was damn. just here to talk about just, Ooh. hey, he only can control your past, bro. The devil got a time machine. He can only take you back. He can't take you Ooh. forward. Because if, if you if you really got, like, faith on a different level, bro, like, I'm one of them that's like, oh, you, you t you've seen some of it, and you might not know some of it, and you're going to find it out today. No, I've been through some real shit, homie. I know, man. I know. I, I saw this video. That, and look, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. I've been wanting to sit down and talk to you for a while. Yeah. And and have a have a broad conversation with you about life. And uh, I watched this video where you revealed uh, multiple traumatic uh, experiences in your life, and uh, I was like. That made me actually pick up the phone and call you even fast. I was like, I, it just it just made me know that, okay, I was on the right track. Because I already knew. I like talking to interesting people. So I already knew that you had a story. I already knew you was an interesting person. I already knew all of that. But when you spoke to that, that made me even want, it made me more compelled to give you a call. Because my goal with this show is always, just like with the music, is, is to provide information and instructions to help people navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. And I know uh, your experience, uh, your experiences can help some people. So I want to kind of like, like revisit that video, so to speak, and, and touch on some of the really? uh, the topics that you... You know me. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, you know me. Let's go. Yeah. Let, you ain't got to pre out purpose yeah. no more. Hey, I got one condition though. Ready? I'm going to put this here. This ain't a phone. It, it is a phone, but it ain't. This represents a card. One condition. Before we get out of here, we got to flip this motherfucker over and, and get under this card. So let's go there. But we're just don't just, just remember, before we get up from this table, what's under this card, we're going to flip it over and go to the motherfucker. Like dominoes. It's one right here. Hey. Flip it over. Just know, it's, you know we're going to flip that bitch over before we leave here. So okay. let's go. All right. Where you want to start at in that video? Billy Sorrels survived molestation. How? Eight years old. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, my mom and dad were together then. And let backstory on me. Um, as a Sorrells man, as a, the head of my family lineage, as the patriarch of my family at now 40, but I, I inherited that, that position at 36. Knowing my great grandfather, my father, my grandfather, all of us, four generations, I was able to see my granddaddy get chastised by my great granddaddy. I was able to see my daddy get chastised and raised by my granddaddy. I was able to get three generations ahead of me um, in my life. My great grandfather didn't die until I was uh, 11 years old. So, eight years old, my family is all coaches. My dad was a high school football coach. My grandfather, high school football coach, played uh, in the Cotton Bowl and is an NCAA champion with that at Tennessee State. My dad went to Tennessee State. I went to the other TSU, Texas Southern University. But my great-grandfather, Candler Sorrells, sixth grade education, worked for the city of Chattanooga as a uh, public health and human safety worker. He scooped up roadkill and got debris and stuff off the road. He was a, a milkman at 10. So I'm eight living this life that's seemingly blissful, the Huxtables. I'm the oldest child of, of three. My mom and dad, my mom got a great job. I'm going to a, 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 a fine arts school, Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences. And one of my closest friends, uh, his older sister, she was 16, bro. Sexually active, around, popular, cute. And she had access to me. Um, she made sure when we got off the bus, we went to school. And because being black and a level of our, ma I'm not going to say the word toxic masculinity, just masculinity and, and where we're from, um, did not allow me to understand the, the volatile nature of those experiences. Yeah, I talked to people about it. Um, but it was immediately washed off as, oh, well, you know, that's, it's a girl. That's what happens. 
But what I didn't understand was this was something that was going to be the key to understanding how to unlock the trauma that I was reliving constantly in relationship to relationship and situation to situation. She was uh, aggressive with me sexually. I'm eight, bruh. I want to watch Ninja Turtles, fam. Like, I'm I'm now having all my first sexual experiences with a 16-year-old sexually active girl. Like, bro. How was she aggressive? I mean, she would beat my ass. If I didn't want to let her suck my dick or play with her, she would call me gay. But this set up a trauma in my mind, and then she was overly affectionate and forceful, and it made me hypersexual, hyperaggressive, you know what I'm saying, and hyperviolent in certain situations. And traumatically, we, we dismiss what we let our young boys see and experience and not understand why we have these problems that have been deep-seated from an early age. We moved to Texas. We in Texas about a year and a half, and, and I, I wear my dad and my mom both on it. My dad passed away uh, in 2017, and my mom is still with me. Um, but at the age of 10, going before my 11th birthday, my mom left the house, and my parents divorced. So we in a strange place. I took all that away, dealt with that. And then my mom left, and my dad raised me and my sisters, now, me and my mom got closer as I got out of school. And she, she, you know, she was trying to be around, but, like, you know, I, I grew up different. You know what I'm saying? Did you resent her? For a while, but it was more of I took it upon myself to to achieve. I I tucked away my pain and my issues, and I said, well, I'm going to overachieve because cause my get back is going to be you're going to see me. You're going you gonna to see what you missed out on. And so the accolades that I achieved were just false walls of achievement for something that I was lacking internally. It's a lot of us that go get jobs, mm -hmm. cars, houses. That shit don't mean nothing to you because you're trying to be seen by somebody not dealing with that fucking trauma that you got on yourself. Now, I'm here to talk about that. So understanding at 35, 36, 37, when I start going to therapy and I hadn't cracked that until I was 39 before my 40th birthday to really understand like through therapy that we had to go back to little Billy to go heal some stuff that happened to me that wasn't right. That was perpetuating and, and resurfacing every relationship with every woman that I dealt with. Why I was emotionally unavailable. Why I felt like, you know what I'm saying, women would never be satisfied. Well, I watched my mom leave my dad, and my daddy wasn't a bad dude, wasn't on drugs, a principal of a high school, a great guy in the community, went to church, and she left. So if my daddy, who's my superhero, can get left, and his daddy, his watch this, two generations, two generations of men. My, my grandfather raised my dad from five so when I hear women or I hear people online talking about what men and what fuck, I'm like, nah, bro, I don't know that. My daddy brush hair like I did. Now when we go back to go talking about when I had that decision about leaving to go on the radio, why it was it was, nah, bro, I was I was groomed for this to stand in that pocket. And I don't think we talk about these traumatic experiences enough as being traumatically gifted in black. 